Hi everyone, it's Camille and today we are going to subscribe to the PubSub to store the data inside the Postgres database. We can use the data for multiple purposes including backtesting or even simple charting. If you like this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's start by creating a new application called Data Warehouse inside the apps directory. We need to add Ecto together with Postgres driver along with PubSub and our streamer app to the depths of our new app. Inside our new app, we need to install all dependencies, so we will be able to generate a new Ecto repository. Together with the new Ecto repository, the generator added a default database configuration to our config file. We need to amend it to match our local dockerized Postgres instance, which we will add as a next step. As per instruction that was printed after generation of the Ecto repository, we need to add it to the children list of our new application. We can now create a new docker compose file that will contain a single Postgres service. We will need to remember to set a password by setting up an environmental variable and expose the default port. We will also put Postgres files in the parent directory. We can now run docker compose app-d to start Postgres in the background. When DB is already running, we can create a new database by running ecto.create and we can generate our first migration that will create a trade events table. Our trade events table will have the same columns as the trade events track that we are already broadcasting via PubSub, so we can copy those across into the migration file. After defining the migration, we can copy most of it to create a schema module for the trade events table. We can now get back to the terminal and call ecto migrate to create the trade events table. 
Before we will progress to writing the code to store stream data, we need to draft some solution. Here's a diagram that should look very similar to what we have already done with Naive Strategy. From the bottom, there's a worker that will subscribe to the PubSub. Above it, there's a dynamic supervisor that will be instructed by the server on the left to start workers. Above those two, we have to introduce a new supervisor to be able to restart both in case of either them dying. We will add the supervisor as a child to main data warehouse application. We will start by creating a new directory called subscribers and progress with implementing the server logic. First, let's get the skeleton of the server working. We can assume that we will have a state with the list of the workers Workers field will be a map of topic name pointing to the worker data struct. Worker data struct will contain PID, ref, stream name and symbol. All details required to restart the subscriber worker after it crashed. As usual, we will create an interface function that will call the server process for us passing the stream name and symbol. Inside the handle function we will downcase both stream name and symbol just to be on the safe side regards consistency. Here I realized that custom PubSub stream names that we introduced in fourth episode won't work. We will go back and refactor our PubSub stream name to be called trade events colon symbol instead trades colon symbol. This way we will match Binance's naming convention and it will be easier to keep it consistent across the stack. Beside that, we will check have we already started a subscriber worker for that topic, and if we didn't, we will start one and store details of it under the topic name in server state. The function to start a worker looks almost exactly the same as the other one that we wrote before to start a naive trader. Now we can focus on last part where we will react to the one of the workers dying. Here we will do some conversion of the workers data as we are using map and we don't know the key. 
To search through the map, we will convert it to a list of tuples and then we will search which one's second element contains tract with pit matching the pit of that worker. It's a little bit more complex than I would like it to be, but we will keep it like that for the time being. Recently I received a message from one of the viewers suggesting that we could use registry and I think we will refactor it to do that, but not in this episode. We will keep things simple for the time being. We can now move on to the worker. We will start again with skeleton implementation of the gen server. We will need to remember to set restart option to temporary to block dynamic supervisor from restarting it when it died. Here we register every worker with a name containing topic for easy overview in Observer. Inside the init function we will subscribe to the PubSub topic. We can now write a handle function for the incoming messages from the pub subtopic. First, we will convert the streamer's trade event to the local ecto trade event and then insert it to db using the repo. It's time to fix the inconsistencies in topic naming. We need to get to the trader and the Binance streamer modules and make our fixes there, making sure that both of them are using lowercase symbols and full stream names. As we are already modifying the streamer, we can also introduce a state struct and clean up the startling method.
We can now implement the final supervisor that will overview both server and the dynamic supervisor and will be direct child of the application. Lastly, we need to add the supervisor that we just implemented to the children list of the warehouse application. The final modification will be the addition of a tiny interface function in front of the streamer module. Here's a quick overview how the implemented solution works. I started a couple subscriber workers and followed up by starting the streamer from Binance. I have also shown that the number of trade events in the database is increasing. And it's done. We are now storing information from PubSub to the database. And this new app will act as a foundation for storing different stuff into the database, like trade history, including orders and transactions, but also naive trader settings, so we can modify them and run back tests using that trade events that we are storing now, and get the results and fine-tune our strategies. But I won't spoiler too much, if you like those videos and you would like to support my channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya!